Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. John's. Is my microphone on? Yes. Yeah? Okay. I can't hear it from back here. So, uh, But my name is Dustin Kristoviak. I'm a pastor on candidate status, and um, I live in Sheboygan, and I'm here because Pastor Anderson is uh, in Florida with his family visiting, I believe, his grandmother. So uh, he should be back on Wednesday, uh, resuming his normal duties here at St. John's. 
Our order of service for this morning is Divine Service Setting 3. You'll find that beginning on page 184 in the front part of the hymnal. We begin with the first hymn, number 568, If Your Beloved Son, O God, number 568. The final stanza is a Trinitarian stanza, so we will stand when we sing it, uh, and we'll sing after the bells introduce the hymn. God's blessings on your worship today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is righteous in all he has done to us, for we have not obeyed his commandments. Glorify your name, O Lord, and deal with us according to your great mercy. The Lord is righteous in all he has done to us, for we have not obeyed his commandments. Glorify your name, O Lord, and deal with us according to your great mercy. be to God on high.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Trinity is from Isaiah chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live and I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 5. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. 
but they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of our Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate he suffered and was buried and in the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's Gospel lesson, Jesus preaches a parable to the religious authorities of his day. It follows a questioning that they have of where Jesus got the authority to say these things. And in all three parables, Jesus preaches judgment on those who should have known better. They should have been able to recognize that He indeed is the Christ sent from God, but they cannot, or perhaps more accurately, will not recognize Him. In today's parable, Jesus compares His kingdom to a wedding feast. And it's not hard to see why. Typically, weddings are fun occasions. They're full of joy and hope for the future. It is the start of something new, something important, something life-changing. There's usually tasty food, fine wine, dancing and music and celebration. And many times you get to reunite with family and friends. Sometimes you see people you haven't seen in decades. But Jesus tells us that the kingdom of heaven is no ordinary wedding, but a royal wedding. The prince is getting married, and the whole nation pines for an invitation to that wedding. The last royal wedding that comes to my mind is when William, Prince of Wales, Duke of Cambridge, married Catherine Middleton. Did any of you watch it on TV? I didn't watch it on TV. But I looked this week and apparently in the United States alone, 23, nearly 23 million people tuned in to see the spectacle. And even for those who didn't, it was nearly impossible to ignore the pictures and the stories on the internet. Everyone wanted to be there. It was a royal wedding and from what I can tell, not that I know a lot about how royal weddings should go, but it lived up to expectations. In Jesus' parable, he tells us that even though the king has spared no expense when it's time to celebrate, nobody wants to come to his wedding. The date to RSVP has come and gone without a word from any of his guests. Can you imagine the disappointment of the king? They don't simply refuse to come. That would be bad enough. They don't check the box that says, I regretfully decline your invitation on the postcard. Oh no, they completely ignore the king's invitation. Can you imagine? So the king sends out another round of inv invitations. Perhaps this time a card in the mail is replaced with a a telephone call. Please, it would mean the world to me if you would come to celebrate my son's wedding. The prime rib is in the smoker. The filet mignon and the bacon-wrapped asparagus are on the grill. The 2018 Silver Oak Cabernet is uncorked. The craft beer is on tap. The symphony is tuning her instruments and warming up. Please come to the wedding. Yet the people still refuse to come. This time they don't ignore the king. They can't. They don't simply hang up the phone on him, but they make excuses. Oh, gee, I really wish I could. But I'm busy that day. Johnny has a soccer tournament. Little Jill has a dance recital. I just got a new dog, and the dog is anxious if I leave the house for too long. I can't come. Others lash out. Jesus tells us that they were so opposed to the king, they actually beat and killed the servants who offered them so gracious an invitation. Well, this parable is a very thinly veiled critique of God's people. From the time of Adam and Eve to the patriarchs, kings, and prophets, God is people are continually and constantly and bullheadedly refusing his invitations. God continually sends prophets to his people 
to invite them to come back, and time and time and time again they refuse. Come back to the Torah. Come back to the covenant. Come back to the Ten Commandments. It's not too late to change your mind and live righteously before me. Turn away from your sins. Walk in the way that God would have you go. But the people don't listen. They won't hear it. Instead of accepting God's gracious invitation, they beat His prophets and they put them to death. They would rather continue living like the Gentiles in their sin than turning away from it. Jesus Himself would be numbered among those who preached God's Word and was put to death for it. In just a few short days from Jesus preaching this parable, He'll be nailed to a cross, left to die. The King in today's parable will not be denied, however. His son is getting married and come hell or high water, that wedding hall will be filled with guests. There will be people there to celebrate and rejoice in this wonderful occasion. The king will not suffer the embarrassment of nobody showing up for his son. And so he sends out still more servants with the most radically universal and wide-ranging invitation he can think of. Go to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you can find. If you see them and they have a pulse, you invite them to the wedding. So the servants go forth with this message and it works. It works wonderfully. For you are here. You are here. Others have ignored the king's invitation, but you are here at the king's wedding feast. Others have found that they have better, more important things to do, but you are here. Others have lashed out at the servants sent to invite the guests, but you are here. You have listened and received the invitation of the king, and you now sit at the wedding feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, right here and right now. Jesus Himself has prepared a place for you and a meal for you to eat. He is here both as guest and as host for you. Rejoice in the joy of your King. If Jesus stopped preaching here, everything would be concluded quite nicely a neat little package with a bow on top. But the parable does not end here. The king goes into the wedding hall to look over his guests, and everything seems just fine, but there's one man who sticks out. He sees one man sitting there who is dressed like a total slob. Who let you in? looking like that. But the man has nothing to say for himself. This little bit at the end always fills me with much fear and apprehension. Everything was going so well. The wedding hall was filled with guests. And now Jesus has to include one man who just won't abide by the dress code. This often happens at the end of Jesus' parables. In this case, you're left wondering, am I dressed appropriately? Did I somehow miss the dress code laid out on the invitation? What is the dress code even for the marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom? Certainly, Jesus is not concerned with the clothing you are wearing here today, but I think He summarizes it well in the Sermon on the Mount. At the end of chapter 5, he's just finished explaining all of the, or not all of, but many of the commandments and showing that the law requires not just following the letter in action, but that our, we must obey them in our thoughts and our words as well. And then at the end he says these words, You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So that's the wedding attire. You, therefore, must be perfect 
as your heavenly Father is perfect. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do you have the appropriate wedding attire? You don't, and neither do I. You know you don't. I know that you know you don't, because just this morning you confessed to me that you didn't. I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. God, I don't have the righteousness required to be in your presence. I am not perfect as my heavenly Father is perfect. But you know who else knows this? God knows this. God knows that you don't have enough righteousness of your own to stand in His presence and to live. He knows this, and so He does something about it. He doesn't wash His hands of you and say, well, I'll look for still more people who are righteous. But instead, He sends His Son to come and live a holy and righteous life for you. He sends His Son to die a sinner's death for you. He sends His Son to fulfill these words spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah writes, I will re greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for He has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. See, God Himself gives to you the garments you need to enter the wedding feast. And that's the problem for this man who gets in without the appropriate attire. It's not that he doesn't have the appropriate attire. Nobody who was invited that day has the right clothing. It's that when the king comes to him, he has nothing to say. He's refused to put on the king's attire. It was provided for him, as it was for all the other guests, but he couldn't even open his mouth to confess his sins and his need for, God to, for, for Christ's righteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as I was reading this text from Isaiah, I couldn't help but be reminded of the rite of holy baptism. We don't often do this ancient practice because often when the baptized come, they're dressed in a white robe and usually they're little tiny babies. But from time to time, if the child doesn't have a robe, the pastor will give them, will place a white garment on the newly baptized and he'll say the following words. Receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sins. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the offertory.
we stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Receive, O Lord, our praise and thanks for every good gift of your grace. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might walk wisely and redeem the time you give us on this earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, preserve the invitation of your saving gospel among us, that many may come into your Son's eternal wedding feast. Protect and vindicate your servants who preach and teach your word. Guard their families from those who oppose their ministry and way of life. Open our ears to listen diligently to your living word and life-giving word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the institution of holy marriage and the myriad blessings of family. Grant that these gifts would be cherished and honored in our society and especially in the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, graciously preserve our nation and cause our leaders to serve faithfully and wisely, making God-pleasing decisions and walking in integrity. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, give us bread that satisfies and everything needful, not for our sakes, but graciously on account of Christ. Provide, we pray, for every need of body and soul, especially for David Rathke, Marlon Strader, Julie Stewart, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of all that exists, we thank you this day for the birth of Keelan Christine Rosnick. As you have added her to the human family, so also unite her to your holy church through the waters of holy baptism. By the gracious working of your Holy Spirit, help her to grow in your nurture and admonition that she may bring glory to you and serve others in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of all wisdom, you have called us to bring up our children in the fear and instruction of you. We give you thanks that you have so directed St. John's and Pilgrim's West Bend to move forward with establishing a classical Lutheran school here in Port Washington. By your word and spirit, grant us wisdom continually to think of the untold blessings you have promised when we, including our children, are taught your word. Drive from our hearts and minds any fears, anxieties, and apprehensions. Be with St. John Fredonia as they gather on October 30th to vote to join and support this school. Fill us all with faith in your providence, hope of your blessing, and love of the neighbor in place of ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, clothe all who appear before you, your altar this day with the wedding garment of your righteousness that they may be worthy guests. Nourish them with your Son's body and blood, that their faith may be strengthened through the forgiveness, life, and salvation you so freely bestow. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, you receive the praise of harp and psaltery in your holy temple of old. Bless the efforts of sacred musicians today to lead the praises of the ascended Lord among us to the edification of your church. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. giver of every good and perfect gift, we confess that no one living is righteous before you. Mercifully grant us grace that we may stand before you on the day of judgment, clothed completely in the righteousness of Christ and giving you endless thanks and praise. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat the body of Christ. Thank you. 
offer you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Christ, shed for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the blood of Christ, shed for you on the cross. Now may the body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to our Lord's table. body and blood of Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated. Are there any announcements this morning? Yes. Today is uh, Friends of Solomon soup. Um, today's soup is white bean with chicken. Mm. We have 10 quart sales there, so it's made by Helen. Um, so please join us and get some soup today. Very good. Any other announcements? Yes.
slips are in the bulletin. Please sign up so we know how many people are coming. The pigs are being get they're in their final journey. <laughs> um, they've got about three weeks to go and they'll be here. So everything else is in the process of being done. And the only thing that I may need help with yet is doing the sauerkraut. So keep your ear to the wind for that one. I may be looking for some help with that. Other than that, uh, please sign the things and put them in Martin. He's out here. So we got a count of how many people are coming. Thank you. Any other announcements? Just one other announcement from me to you at the expense of Pastor Anderson. I understand he's a Vikings fan. <laughs> So I would like you all to Google your best Packer Viking jokes and just, you know, really let them have it on Sunday after, uh, at, the, at the tailgate, um, just so he knows where he is and, and doesn't forget. Um, I, have, I have no other announcement. Have a wonderful day in God's grace.